Okay, so we've been in representative symmetry operations using and then seeing how they transform. But that's not the kind of most quantitative or easiest way to visualize these symmetry operations. So one way that uh, might be easier for those of you who are kind of mathematically inclined is we can represent symmetry operations as matrices. So what we want is if we have our symmetry operation R, so this is our symmetry operation, symmetry operation, we could have this symmetry operation act on any basis we want. So here's our basis. So in the past, in the past classes, we've been doing this as the molecule in question. For example, we did ammonia and we labeled all the H atoms. And then so this, then we wanted to figure out how this operation transforms this basis into the, the new basis. So I'll draw that in yellow. So in class we did ammonia molecule, so we, our operation is C3. How does this original molecule, aka if we had something like H1, H2, H3, how does this end up and then becoming, if we rotate counterclockwise, for example, then we become here, we become H1, H3, H2. So we can represent, this is just what we did spatially, but we, let's suppose that we can actually make our basis anything we want. We can do orbitals, which is going to come into play later. We can do bonds. We could do atoms. Um, so one way to kind of make it more universal is we could use our basis as the x, y, z coordinates. So we can represent it as, here's our matrix R. How does this R operate on our x, y, z coordinate system? And then this is going to become equal to a new coordinate system, x prime, y prime, z prime. So this is our new coordinate system. This is the goal if we can then represent R as x, y, z is a basis of three of three elements. If we were doing, for example, d orbitals, this would be a, a five by one vector. Um, but because it's a basis of three, what we're going to do is this will now be a three by three matrix. Um, and that's because uh, this final x prime, y prime, z prime is going to be some transformation of our original x, y, z. So we're going to see something that, uh, so r times x, y, z is going to be just a new function of x, y, z. So let's kind of do a demonstration of that. Um, if r is this vector, 0, or sorry, r is the matrix, rather, 0, 1, 0, um, 0, 0, 1, and then 1, 0, 0. This is just one arbitrary matrix. So I'll do a review of matrix algebra. So if we are multiplying this by x, y, z, so the way you do matrix multiplication is you take so this will end up being a new vector of three. So three things. So this first row is going to be this, this row multiplying down this x, y, z. So it's always row by column. And then so this first element, final vector is going to be 0x times plus 1y plus 0z. And then we're going to do it for the second row times this x, again, times x, y, z. 0x, 0y plus z. And then our third element in this final product is going to be, again, 1 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z. 1x plus 0y plus 0z. And then so what this means is that our final uh, product is going to be y, z, x. That's our review of matrix algebra. Um, so basically, if we're, again, looking at how x, y, and z transform under certain symmetry operations, we can represent each symmetry operation as a 3 by 3 matrix. And then we want to know is find out how x, 
y, and z become our new x, y, and z. So if, if I were to go back to this kind of original uh, scheme, we found that x prime, so this means that x prime equals y, y prime equals z, and z prime equals x. Um, so let me, let me do kind of like a simple demonstration. So if we want to look at how x, y, and z transform, let's first define our coordinate system. So our original basis is going to be x. Let's make this going up z. And then going into the back is going to be y. And so we want to figure out how, uh, we want to figure out where these turn into once we do the symmetry operation. So um, just as a note, E is the identity operation. So this coordinate system remains unchanged. So the E matrix is always going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And this is because if we wanted to do uh, E times x, y, z, this must equal x, y, z. We get out what we started with. So this is the identity matrix. Um, if, for example, let's say we wanted to do, let me redraw our coordinate system here. So if we want to do, let's start with x, y. Here's our x, y. Let's suppose we wanted to do a mirror, a sigma v, that contains this y-axis, sigma v. And then what I mean is that sigma v is because it contains the z-axis too. So what's going to happen is, if we figure out where our new coordinate system is, after we do the mirror, our x prime is going to be, so if x is pointing this way, um, our x prime, once we do the mirror, x is going to be mirrored across this uh, mirror plane. And so x prime will be here. Since the mirror plane contains the y-axis, y prime will just be the same as y. So this will just be here. So y, y prime are the same. And then z also contains this mirror plane. So z, z prime equals z. So um, after we do our operation, the mirror plane operation, we know that x prime equals negative x, y prime equals y, and z prime equals z. So uh, this has to be our final vector, negative x, y, and z. So to find the matrix that transforms x, y, and z into this, uh, it's relatively straightforward. Again, if you know how matrix multiplication works. So to, to have this first element be negative x, our, matrix, our first row for this matrix has got to be negative 1, 0, 0. And for y and z to be the same, the diagonal has to just be 1s again. So it's 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 1. And then so this is going to be our sigma v, whatever this particular sigma v that we're doing. So this is how to show, use the matrix to represent this sigma v. And so we can use this to transform any coordinate in space into uh, once the sigma v has been defined. And so the key thing to remember for, again, for all these um, operations and matrices is that you must define your x, y, and z coordinate system and keep that consistent throughout all your operations. Otherwise, it's not going to work.